is it and we are live on xylophone tv also live ah streaming on youtube and of course facebook our facebook page is xylophone 102.1 fm and our youtube page is xylophone media in both cases xylophone is spelled z y l o f o n this is the man black rasta and this is the black pot where we speak truth to power we normally would not criticize because that is not our stock in trade what we love to do is to bring out issues but if we must criticize to build we will criticize to build and not to destroy this is the black pot aka kuku and we're going to take issues straight away this is an issues based let us still issue based discussion. Mm -mm -mm. Now, this one was published today, the first day of December 2021. And I'm reading this from City Newsroom, uh, written by one Ernest Ahinfol. My God. It says, A Greek minister forced to wear a tie to be in parliament for improper dressing. A Greek minister forced to wear a tie. To be in parliament for improper dressing. I read. The Minister for Food and Agriculture, Dr. Owusu Efriyea Koto, was on Wednesday, December 1, that's today, 2021, compelled to wear a tie before being in parliament amidst a heated debate on parliament's approval of the 2022 budget statement. The minister was seen in the house wearing a suit without a tie to complete his dress as the rules of parliament require he was brought to the attention this was brought to the attention of the first deputy speaker by the member of parliament for Adaklu, governs kwame agboja he does ask the speaker to order the minister to go out and dress properly before coming to the house I can notice on the side of the majority, a former senior colleague of the house, the current agri minister, is not pre properly dressed. And I want you to direct him to go out and come back to the house properly dressed. As it is, it is not properly, he is not properly dressed to be in the chamber. It's a convention in this house that when you wear a suit, you must add a tie. However, NPP member of parliament for Okiri, uh, Mr. Dan Boche, disagreed with Mr. Agboja. According to him, the request for the minister to be ordered out uh, is shameful and should be dismissed. We stay in Ghana and in Africa, and we always talk about colonialism and neocolonialism. Mr. Speaker, the Speaker of the British Parliament has ruled that a member of parliament can enter the house and without wearing a tie. We watch them always ask questions about wearing a tie. And we sit in Ghana and shamefully say that someone isn't wearing a tie. It's shameful and you must dismiss it. Regardless, the minority chief whip, Mubarak Muntaka, rejected the arguments made by, by Dan Boche. I am surprised that my friend who is a senior member of this house supported the dressing of the minister who is improperly dressed the first deputy speaker sitting as the speaker agreed with the other clue mp and ruled that per the practice of the house mps are supposed to wear ties once they wear suits he explained further that MPs are only free not to wear ties when they choose to wear African prints. The minister subsequently rushed out for a minute to put on a tie and return to the chamber. So the shameful neo-colonialist behavior will continue amongst us, unfortunately. My brother, my sister, a demonic, stupid budget has been brought to parliament. You are fighting, my brother, my sister, to exorcise the demon in that budget. You are fighting, my brother, my sister, tooth and nail as to who has the majority to deal with this demonic budget. The so-called Ajinkwa budget. 
The budget that has all the demons from hell sitting inside. And all you are thinking about is somebody wearing a tie. It's so shameful in the list. My brother, my sister. Now I sit back and look at some of these things and I immediately start getting pok pok bili bili. Listen. There are very, very serious things to discuss in parliament. A failed a Greek minister, a sleeping a Greek minister who has been inspired by his colleague sleeping president to also become president. Dr. Osea Kutu has come into the chamber and you say he's improperly dressed. My brother, my sister, when I saw this, I knew I was certainly going to talk about it. My brother, I remember when I was hauled before this same parliament for saying that 80% of parliamentarians smoke weed. Some of the MPs stretch out their legs in my way to cross me or trip me over. But my brother, my sister, God is not a parliamentarian in Ghana. When I started walking, many more MPs were shouting that I was not well dressed. I should go back and dress well. And I was wearing an African print and kente together. Kente is the most popular African print or African fabric in the whole world. This was what I was wearing in the parliament. And some parliamentarians were asking me to go back and dress properly and come. Unfortunately, those who were even asking me to go and dress well and come back were in suits like colonialists. To be honest with you, when I see a man wearing a suit and tie, I see him as a comedian. Anyone, it doesn't matter who you are. When I see you wearing a suit with a tie, in fact, I start to look down on your acumen. I start to look down on your IQ. I start to look down immediately on what you really stand for. My brother, my sister, we have a president who has the penchant of running around the world as we speak right now, the president is in the United States. And he's always wearing suit to please his paymasters, the gays and lesbians. My brother, my sister, I see Mr. President running left, right, and center in oversized suits with a pot belly. My brother, my sister, how much do we make from all the designer suits that they wear in parliament? You cry that there are no jobs. The tailors in Nima are not making money from your stupid suits that you wear in parliament. The designers inside a shaman are not making a penny from the designer suits you wear. In the same vein, my brother, my sister, GTP makes no money from all the so-called properly dressed suits that you have around you like comedians. So why do you take so much interest in extolling the power and prowess of the colonial master? Because in the days of colonialism, the colonial master made sure that he instilled it inside your coconuts that if you did not dress like him, then you were less of a human being. Go and read about the Willie Lynch syndrome. If you did not get your skin light like his, you were less of a human being. And if you were not closer to him, you were less of a human being. Today when I see people wearing suit, and our Christian preachers are the worst corporates of this, they even start competing. Oh, me, I wear a suit once. They start pointing fingers at somebody who wore the same suit at four different preaching places. And by this stupid competition, 
They are making money for the colonial master. Because all your suits are tailored right there. In Europe, in America, and the rest of the places. My brother, my sister. So when I sit back and I see our own parliamentarians who are supposed to be making laws for us. Sit down and argue about colonial legacies. In fact, I cringe. You remember when WikiLeaks released a lot of files in those days? It was said that Nana Akufu Ado does not look good in African prints. And for that matter, he always wore a suit. Do you remember that? Today, my brother, my sister, even though the president has tried once or twice to wear an African print, most of the time, he's dressed like a comedian in an oversized suit with a pot belly. The only thing that Akufu Ado needs to be complete as a comedian is a carrot on his nose. And that's it. And I say this with all seriousness. When I meet a man in suit, I start looking down on him. And that is true. And today, it has become a huge legacy for Ghanaians, even in parliament, to be competing over what suit they wear and they must put on a tie. Is it to distract the proceedings in parliament or what? If I was the president of this country, every single parliamentarian would wear an African print inside that chamber. Now you are looking for your chamber to be built better. You want a parliament house that could be built better. Remember when we all came out to fight that thing? With the tag, drop that chamber. My brother, my sister, they want a chamber to come and sit down there with their suits. Is it not disgraceful? I mean, look at the photograph of me in parliament. Look at this photograph. Look at it. Look at the beautiful beads. African beads, 100% right from the head, go down to the toe. Look at the kente. Look at this dressing. And these guys wearing suit all over are telling me that I am improperly dressed. Colonial minds. The demons in some of these parliamentarians must be exorcised. Or else this country is going to continue accelerating at a geometric speed backwards. We call it deacceleration. How much is the Ghanaian tailor making from the president's oversized suits? How much is the Ghanaian shoemaker and the cobblers making from the president's shoes? You go around hypocritically telling African Americans and the rest of them, year of return. Year of what? Year of stupidity and nonsense. Listen, African Americans, you are begging to come into this country. A lot of them came into this country, my brother, my sister, because they wanted to be connected to the cultural nature of the people here. And the first people they met at the airport to welcome them, if there were people to welcome them at all, were people wearing suits. So for a second, they turned around to find out if they were in Britain. Are we at the right place? Where was the culture? Totally missing. When your president is gallivanting around the world in an oversized suit with a fat pot belly. Where is the culture when your parliamentarians who are supposed to be representing us, the people, are dressed in suit? And they are now even competing and asking people to go and wear tie so that their dressing will be complete. Kwame Nkrumah will cringe in his grave. Kwame Nkrumah would weep non-stop for 20 more years in his grave because of some of these things that you guys are saying. If I was president, all these guys would wear African print so that at least GDP, GTP can make money. A cost of more textile limited ATL can also make money so that the Ghanaian tailor can make some money 
so that the tailor in Nima, the tailor in Ashaiman, Sukura, and all those places can at least make some money. The more suits you wear, the more employment you give to Europeans and Americans. The employment that you said is so scarce. You are giving that out to Europeans and Americans. From when my eyes opened, I refuse to wear any of those things. In this country, people are quick to brand you as an old man as long as you wear African print, true or false. The moment you start wearing African print, you are an old man. They love Europeans and Americans more than they love themselves. That is why it's a law in Ghana that civil servants would wear African print only once in the week. The rest of the days they can wear European attire. Some of these little, little things, my brother and my sister, are so huge, but they can't see. They turn it upside down. They make a mole hill out of a huge mountain. I want to leave it here, my brother, my sister. As for the Greek minister, he's already failed. He's full of lies. I don't care even if he goes to the parliament naked. The most important thing is that at least he has exposed the colonial minds in parliament. There's a budget that you are fighting. And all you can do is to go and sit in parliament and talk about somebody's time. You walk around, driving around with suits in your car and tie. That, that's official. Jesus have mercy. And you claim you are independent. How can the tailors in your constituencies make money when you are walking around in suits? I leave it here, brethren. We have so many different things to talk about. And some of these things, I get so emotional when I talk about this. Pan-Africanism is what has made Ghana what it is today. Nkrumah was a crazy Pan-Africanist. Nkrumah was a die-hard Pan-Africanist. In fact, Nkrumah was an unrepentant Pan-Africanist. An unapologetic Pan-Africanist. And everywhere he went, he spoke Africa. He walked Africa. Nkrumah traveled around the world with an African band. In fact, a Ghanaian band. The Rambless International Band. And everywhere he went, high life was played. My brother, my sister, let's think about some of these things and return to our African nature. Forget that you have a bourgeoisie president, an arist aristocratic president, who loves to parade himself in comedian suits and shoes. Think about the totality of your country and the continent. You are only a better people if you begin to passionately like and love what you have. If you don't wear the African suits, you expect, expect African Americans to wear that. Look at all those who came for the year of return. 99.99% of them were all in African attire. All the people who came into this country, before they came, they started looking for African attire to wear. Only for them to be met at the airport by ministers and so on and so forth wearing suits. What kind of a disgraceful behavior is that? What kind of a disgraceful behavior is that? I leave it here, my brother, my sister. Now there's this thing I want to read from um, Peace FM Online, and it's interesting. It says we are investigating alleged impersonation of Ajua Safo in parliament. And this is Ablakwa speaking. We are investigating alleged impersonation of Ajua Safo in parliament. Let's look at it. The North Tong MP Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa has disclosed that the minority in parliament if he's investigating a case of impersonation of Domi Kwabenya MP, Sarah Ajua Safo, in Parliament on Tuesday. He told the host of Joy FM's Super Morning Show on Wednesday that the minority side suspects the lady the majority side came in with 
was not the domain Kwabenya MP. Following pictures and videos we are reviewing this morning, it is becoming quite apparent to us that there may be a case of impersonation with regards to the lady who was presented as Ajua Safo. It's beginning to appear that she may not be Ajua Safo, he said. My brother, my sister, these people can do anything to stay in power. They can do anything to mess all of us up. What didn't they do to Nkrumah? I don't trust them. I don't trust the president. I don't trust anybody who trusts the president. My brother, my sister, these were the people who bombed Nkrumah night and day. When they succeeded in overthrowing Nkrumah, what did they do? They carried corpses. Those of you who have not read Dark Days in Ghana, go pick that up and read. And some other materials on Nkrumah. They brought corpses into the Flagstaff house, which was the office where Nkrumah's office was, and the seat of government, and stuffed that into Nkrumah's refrigerators. To tell the whole world that a can can me that they were all talking about was actually an occultist. And that the white handkerchief Nkrumah was always waving to the crowd. Was actually a demonic handkerchief which came from India. And that the walking stick that he even held and walked around with was occultic. Today, they succeeded in deceiving a lot of Ghanaians about that. My brother, my sister, if they can go all this height to discredit a man that the world worships, then what can they, can they not do in parliament? Their fathers were nothing but suicide bombers. Their fathers were nothing but Al-Qaeda bombers. And we have said that time and again with no apology. If I was the president of this country, all the statues containing their fathers and grandfathers would all be smashed. J.B. Duncan's statue, if they want, they should carry it to J.B. If they want it there. Akufuado's statue should go to J.B. If they worship suicide bombers, my brother, my sister, in J.B., then carry it there. But we do not regard bombers. My brother, my sister, what did they do to Nkrumah to discredit him? Even Mahama, the dead goat, what did they not do to Mahama? Did they not say that Mahama had bought houses in Dubai? Did they not get foot soldiers to go about smearing the name of the man? When it's as simple as a DNA, they could have just gone there to find out. My brother, my sister, at the end of the day, did Mahama have any building there in Dubai? When they are doing their propaganda, my brother, my sister, I, 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 was, I was just going through a few things and I saw the CEO, is it the president of Maslock? I think his name is Stephen Amor or something. I'm not too sure. Granting an interview and crying. And I, I, I told him, I said, listen, brother, you can cry from morning till Jesus Christ comes. Hey, you can cry all the tears from out of your eyes. Borrow the tears of your younger brother or elder brother. Cry all. Borrow the tears of all your family members. Cry all. Borrow the tears of Nana Akufu Ado and all of them. Cry everything. Nana Akufu Ado is nothing but a traitor to this country. Traitor. Hopeless creature. Traitor. Beg your pardon. Hopeless traitor. My brother. Stephen Amor is over there crying. Man, 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 that we should think about poor people and look at the contribution of Nana Akufuado to the people of Ghana. And I said, oh, really? Yeah. What is it? Simple. Tell us how much tax money you are using to fly around the world so exorbitantly. Up till now, the arrogant, pot-bellied, 
oversized suit wearing president has refused to account. And you go around crying on TV that uh, Nana Kufuado is the angel of our time. Which of the angels? We have different types of, we have fallen angels. Islam would even teach you that yes, some of the angels are not even actually angels. Some of them are malaika to mouth. Maybe Nana Kufuado is malaika to mouth. Find out who malaika to mouth is. I will not educate you. My brother, my sister, let's get serious. What kind of crying did Mustafa Hamid not cry? When you see some of these politicians crying, they are crying because of their belly. They know that when the youth are beginning to get more serious, and they are beginning to wake up from their slumber, that signifies the end of their dirty game. And for that matter, because we know how sympathetic Ghanaians are. Better still, how empathetic Ghanaians are. My brother, my sister, we are quick to get absorbed. Eh? To get very, very much imbibed, my brother, my sister, in somebody's sorrow. Jesus, this is deep for somebody to understand until he smokes in Tampi tonight. What are we talking about, brethren? Ah, me, Black Rasta. When a man is weeping, I quickly get into it. In fact, a man stole my money. I remember the very first concert that I had in Accra. At the beach. There was a Muslim guy there called Rashid. I don't know where he is now. Wherever he is, it's unto him. My brother, he asked me to bring the tickets that we were going to use at the gate so that he would inspect. And when we brought the tickets, in fact, they found a way of getting duplicates. And we were seeing people packed. And we're so happy. Packed! We finished the show. And when they showed us the money, I couldn't believe it. My boys were able to arrest a certain man who had tens of those tickets. In fact, hundreds of the tickets selling at the gate. And when we brought him in, he started shedding tears. Little did I know that he and the Rashid guy and some other people were all accomplices. But the moment he started crying, trust me, I felt it. He was an elderly person, like 60 plus. The moment he started crying, what got inside me was that, ah, this could be my father. Maybe he's hungry. Maybe he has children at home who should eat. I forgot about the fact that he had stolen from me. And now I had imbibed that kind of sorrow from him. Like osmosis. But I have grown better. I have become a better human being. God has helped me. Right now I'm able to tell what tears are genuine and which ones are crocodile tears. So when I see crocodile tears from politicians like Mustafa Hamid, well, we have to change this country. We have to change this country. Oh, horrible, don't cry. Allah, wallahi, we have to so disgrace to be a Ghanaian today. Eh, really? Really? And Stephen Amor would go and sit on TV crying. We should think about poor people. We should think these are people who preach virtues and practice vices. What did their boss Nana Kufuado tell us? Yet is Sikansu Yebre. Meba meti petrosu. Cape Coast for Yebema Mohabo. I saw my airport. Eh, eh, meba. Media. Yet is Sikansu. Na, the Omusha or Mayano. Na, Munye. Eh, Ghana is not a poor country. On my way, you know, here, on here, my. Tisikaso. Come there. Esla and the rest. Today, my brother, my sister, are you better off? Are you better off? This government has borrowed more than any government in this country. 
this government is still on a borrowing spree. This government is angry that we have been able to block some of the loopholes of borrowing and is so angry. My brother, my sister, so when I see people like Stephen Amor sitting down there and crying that people are not recognizing the good work of Nana Akufuado, I say, listen, we have seen Mustafa Hamid. He cried. Today, he's walking around enjoying his life. You guys only cry because you don't have the chance to steal. You guys only cry because we have discovered your ways of being dishonest. That's all the reason you cry. I leave it here, my brother. Listen, I won't be surprised if it was not Ajua Safu at all. We all had Sam Jata tell us that they were bringing a whole private jet to fly in Ajua Safu. Why Ajua Safu? Parliament is treating Ajua Safu like a pampered baby. Like a pampered baby. One, she had to call her baby father, Kennedy Japan, to come and help her campaign because it was very tight there. In the words of Kennedy Japan himself, he left everything and went there. Now, when it was time for her to be vetted, for the ministerial position of women and gender. What happened? She couldn't make it. Then the excuse was that she was nursing a baby. And when she finally appeared, the baby was not with her. And parliament treating her like that spoiled child. Oh, because you have a baby at home, we'll make it short so you can go. Really? Why didn't you go to her house to interview her? Why didn't you ask her to bring her baby? So that whilst breastfeeding the baby, she could answer questions. These are national issues. They are not issues for comedians and jokers. Minority and majority sat down and said, because you have a baby at home, we'll make it short. Are you compromising the vetting? It's like saying, oh, you are going to write an examination. And because you uh, have a soul. You know, uh, other people are supposed to use two hours to answer the question. We give you 10 hours because of your soul. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? My brother, my sister, we need to get serious. These are national issues and these national issues should be approached as such. If you cannot vet her now, let her stay away until she is comfortable enough to be vetted. Let the president present another person to be vetted. Later on, if she's okay to be vetted uninterruptedly, then we can do the vetting and then remove whoever is there and make her a minister. Am I making sense? But no, the spoiled child that she is, look at how they did it in parliament for her. Now they are sending a private jet, according to Sam Jata George. To go and bring her all the way from Germany. And the next thing we are hearing is that, oh, she was impersonated. For how long has she been away from parliament? Can we know? Even those who had stroke. Even those who had liver cirrhosis. Even those, my brother, my sister, who could have their head even cut off once it came to voting they would find a way of coming to the parliament house to vote. That's what it is with our politics. Pinpoint NPs whose heads have been cut off, decapitated. Let them be called that, oh, we have to vote over some crazy demonic budget. And the people, you know, our numbers are so close. Hey! They would walk headless, like headless chicken, all the way from wherever they are, they are treating their strokes and all that. I, my brother, my sister, would love this thing to be investigated properly. Let them look it out and find out exactly if somebody has impersonated somebody. Let them look at the pictures. Today I was speaking with a few people and they said they have been investigating. 
They are following all the airplanes and they haven't seen any passenger on any of the planes that came in between what time to what time, my brother, my sister, via any of the planes. Let us investigate it properly. In this country, we have no respect for the electorate. President can fly left, right, and center. will never account for how much of our money he's throwing away. MPs fall sick night and day. They fly business class, some of them private jet, to go and treat themselves outside this jurisdiction. Fly to America, fly to... Are you not ashamed of yourselves? Finance minister and all those people. Are you guys not ashamed of yourself? Back being and all those... Are you not ashamed of yourselves? You get up and sit in a plane. Whilst you are flying, you are looking at people who are dying from malaria. Whilst you are flying over Accra, you are seeing people who are dying from hunger. You are seeing people who have guinea worm. You are seeing people Qatar. Come on, Qatar is even killing. Then you are in the plane being sponsored by the same malaria killing, Qatar killing people. Think, brethren. You are in a plane flying. You look down over Accra. You see Kayaye carrying load. Some of them are hit by cars. Left, right, and center, they are dying. Malaria is killing people. Guinea worm is destroying people. Qatar is even killing people in this country. Then you will sit in a plane sponsored by all these people on death row. And you are comfortable. What kind of God do you save? What kind of God do you save? And you are comfortable. You are flying out. It's like each man for himself. Oh, there's a big stone coming from uh, the skies. So everybody's covering his head. Nobody would leave his head and cover another man's head. We voted you in there to represent us. Not to kill us. They are all flying. They have no conscience. On the taxpayers' budget. And they are okay. Do you know why poor people live long? They say, Aboa on Nidriano. Nyame, a shadow so. The animal that has no tail is God that takes care of it. When the flies start coming, it cannot wag its tail. It's God that takes care of it. There's another proverb that says, When God breaks your legs, He would show you. How to hop. Despite these people flying all the way to where, where, where? America, England, South Africa, Dubai. To go for treatment. They are always dying. They are dying like chicken. Liver issues, stroke, malitis, dementia. All kinds of, some diseases that do not even have names. They have it and they are dying. Yet the poor man is, is living. God is not a crazy man. I leave it here. I look at another issue here. And uh, well. Ah. Oh Jesus. Ah. Oh gosh. It's interesting. Oh my God. All right, well, let's look at it. I'm reading this from Ghana Web, and it says, A capping polo to serve 90 days in jail term as count dismisses appeal. Court, as court, I beg your pardon. And I read just two paragraphs, and I'm okay. The High Court in Accra, presided over by Justice Ruby Aite, has dismissed the appeal filed by Rosemond Alade Brown. Uh, challenging her 90 days custodial sentence. What this means is that a crapping polo will now serve a 90 days jail term imposed on her by the circuit court. In fact, she served 8 days already, right? So it's left with about, is it 18 days or 8 days? 18 days, yes. So she has about 82 days more to go. Ruling on the application by the convict asking uh, the court to set aside the custodial sentence and replace it with a fine. The court said the 90 days custodial sentence imposed on her was not excessive and harsh. 
my brother, my sister, Nigerians woke up to this news shocked. A lot of Nigerians now see Ghana as heaven. Nobody goes to jail in Nigeria for putting pictures or twerking naked or even having sex with a goat. They have too many problems to think about who is sleeping with a goat and who is naked on social media. Nigerians have seen too much nakedness to worry about social media nakedness. Nigerians have become so hungry to bother about social media nakedness. But they woke up and that somebody was holding a gun on social media and he was nabbed and sent behind bars. Nigerians are like, what? Ghana? Oh my Ghana na wow. Ekuapimpolo had a son. And with the son, she stood right naked in front of her. According to what was said and what we saw. And then boom, it became big on social media. And rap, she was nabbed. And rat, she was sent in there behind bars. My brother, my sister. Equia people know, try to talk about it. But all of a sudden, she became so remorseful. And Ghanaian said, oh, if she's become remorseful, then the same osmosis that I was talking about. We were osmosed, my brother, my sister. When she started becoming remorseful and her sympathy osmosized into us. And then we also became sympathetic. Do you get it? Sometimes you see somebody crying. Even if it's your enemy. The way they cry, you start crying too. There are people like that. I'm one of those. So when they gave her the chance to come out from jail, she came out and thanked everybody and everything was okay. And then, the next thing we saw was Ekiapim Polo twerking again. Ish. So, the temporary period of comfort has brought you back into your old elements. And all of a sudden, she said, if I don't twerk like this, uh, I cannot make money. She said, really? All right. So twerking is your day job. I respect Equia Pimpolo. I love her. But my brother, my sister, if this country will be a better country, our laws must work. I love this young lady. Honestly, I love her. And she knows that I love her. But even if it's me, I have to go to jail for even 10 years for this country to be a better country. Why worry? I would be in jail. I would write more books. I would write music and poems. I would teach prisoners in jail. I will teach them the gospel. I will teach them how to write poetry. I will form a drama group in jail. So that when people are coming out, they become better people. Sometimes God takes you to jail. So that you can bail people from their will. It's deep, huh? Is it deep? Should I repeat it? Sometimes God takes you to jail. So that a lot of people in there you can bail. From all their hustles and bustles and their will. Because not everybody was born so frail. Jesus have mercy. If you in Polo, well, the law is the law. Just go in there, spend the time. We've seen some other people who went in there for one week or so, and they came out, they have become sober. We have seen people who have gone in there the wild guys that they were. We're, we're, we're going to beat you. I'm going to kill you. Huh? Me, me, for see you. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to slap you. you. When they threw them in there, for that short period, they became civil. With all the giddy giddy, with all the noise, firing guns all over the place, behaving like gangsters. 
when they threw them in there for that short period, their true destiny came to them. They are sober now. If this would sober all of us, including me, let it happen. If this will help Ghana become a better country from the nonsense going around, let it happen. And I encourage the IGP. Whatever you're doing, it looks like Ghanaians are applauding you. You have slowed down a little bit for some time now. Please bring back the fire. When you slow down a little, with a little comfort that comes in, Ghanaians have the penchant of returning to their old ways. To God be the glory. Nigerians now see Ghana as heaven. That a Kwapim Polo, an actress, will be thrown behind bars for stripping naked before her son. Nigerians don't understand. They say Ghana is a different crop of human beings. Same way, my brother, my sister. Let us all support the law and let the law work. The shortcuts and the bribery, too much. You go to the jailhouse and it's only poor people and we smokers. The rich we smokers are not there. The poor weed smokers are those who are there. The foul thieves are those who are there. Those stealing our taxes are not there. When you go to the jailhouse, my brother, my sister, slave queens are not there. It is small, small, small time prostitutes who take 15, 20 cities to have sex on the streets who are there. When you go to our jailhouses, there are no precedents. Mahama is not there. Nanado is not there. Kufuo is not there. The people who are there, my brother, my sister, are me and you. Whose tax money is being stolen? It is time to make the law work so that we can have presidents there. So that we can have TV ministers there. That is how it's supposed to work. It doesn't matter who you are. When prisoners start seeing so-called celebrities in there, they will realize that, hey, if this guy will come here, then me there, Charlie. But you go there, it's the same crop of people. Those who have been smoking weed for the past 30 years, there are those in there. And their weed smoking in there even becomes worse. Small time thieves, petty thieves, they are those who are there. So they graduate from petty thievery into what? Armed robbery. Please, we are speaking wisdom. We need everybody to come together and think about some of these things. When you go to the jailhouse in America, you will see the rich and the poor. Yes, the poor would be more, but you will see at least a few rich people. Then you can learn. If we start gripping the big heads, the big, big, big thieves, eh? like ministers and presidents, and putting them in there, the country will be better. But you go there. I go to the prisons every year. It's young, 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 small boy. Somebody stole a fowl. He's been put in there for 20 years. Somebody stole banana because he was hungry. In there 15 years. Somebody and his brother fought. He's in there for the past 17 years. The lawyer who was handling his case was, was uh, transferred from, uh, from Bahirabach to Michok all the way to uh, 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 a friend say uh, 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 all the way to so they can't find a lawyer anymore and he's there somebody stole my brother my sister one bunch of plantains according to the Greek minister which cost four cities he's in there for the past 19 years in fact the prison officer who was supposed to take him to court he didn't have money to bring a taxi to take him there because the prison van broke down. He is there. Huh? Prison officer is the one who is supposed to take money from his salary to take a prisoner to the court. So when he looks in his pocket and realizes there's no money, he turns a blind eye to the court date. He will rot in there. 
these are the people in jail. The drug barons. Those who were smuggling coke and crack. The hot drug barons. My brother and my sister, they have connections. MPs are flying out of the country using VIP. We all remember Amuatin, who also used the VIP with a lot of coke and crack. An MP. In this country, we called him honorable. But when he arrived in the UK, he was a dishonorable. They jailed him like a fowl. After years of serving that criminal, this, this disgraceful sentence, he came back to this country and he still wanted to run for some something, some office. Are we jokers? Amuatin, former MP Amuatin, carried drugs to the UK. Disgracefully, he's still walking around. He wants respect. From who? Had it been this country, he would continue over and over. Nobody would find him. After all, they have connections. True or false? Why you may stole all our money? He's still walking around. When the courts ruled that he had actually stolen the money, he paid something small. Now they are trying to uh, sell whatever, blah, 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 and some gimmicks and jingoisms going on around there. Hey, at the time that the court did not rule that he had stolen our money, when I mentioned that he was a thief, he came after me. His lawyers came after me. Today, the courts ruled that, no, this guy took that money dishonestly. So he's a thief. Return the money to the people. It's your money. It's my money. Some people see government money as some abstract money hanging in Jupiter. Let's get more serious, brethren. The rate of illiteracy in this country has made us morose, morons, morons. We hardly can think. Any trickster can make money in this country. Tricksters all over the place. And the court system that is supposed to be dealing with these people, judges, magistrates are going after goat meat to free armed robbers. What a country! Hi, hey, look, this country does not look like it's part of it. In fact, it looks like it's another country in a different universe. A country where the justice system is so much tampered that it is tapering in corruption. Somebody won't understand it, I know. Hey, when it comes to mileage in corruption in this country, hey, my brother, my sister, we will cover the whole universe and we still need space. This I know is deep for some people. Corruption is our middle name in this country. The judges and magistrates who are supposed to be giving us justice, they wear their goat hair and go and sit down there in the courtroom, speak English that even Queen Elizabeth won't understand. Speak English that even only the devil understands. Before you realize there's a hammer on the team, bang! And then your world crashes. You understand nothing, Tikshi. The courts in Kumasi, I wonder. You go to Kumasi, where English language is a problem. I went to school in Kumasi and it was general, it was published by the GES. The students in the Ashanti region failed more when it came to English. And it's simple. Because the people that speak their language more, three. If you speak any other language apart from three, they laugh at you and see you as a villain. Until Santi, until Chi. Chia! Ube Cabra Fusa, Obi Anti, Masa, Fioko, Unti Chi. Hey, what's your name? Hey, you do you know me? Oh, Fioko, you be a Fioko. Fioko, Fioko, and 616 million other people who come and support it. Go, 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 Fioko. They respect their language more than any other language. So the English language is secondary to whatever. In Kumasi, in, in, in Ashanti. Students fail more. I don't know if it has changed. But in my days, Ashanti region performed woefully when it came to English language. According to Wayek. Imagine the courts in Ashanti. The lawyer is saying, my learned friend, according to article which was parambulated into a system of uh, uh, paralysis, which the criminal is only sitting down there on tissue. 
All that will wake him up is that hammer. Bang! I jail him. That he would understand. Just obey quite a few as My brother, my sister, we value things that we should be throwing away. We jail the wrong people and free the big thieves. I leave it here. Equipping Polo. 90 days will come soon. It's difficult. I wish it didn't happen. But because of what we stand for, that our loss must work, let it happen. God is with us. You will be okay. And there's another thing here. Uh, I normally don't like to deal with entertainment stories. I hear uh, when Dishé is here saying that, um, what's the name? Rocky Dawuni's um, nomination. Uh, in fact, his grabby nomination came via a connection. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Rocky Dawuni's Grammy nomination came via a call. And this is on Peace FM Online. Yes, Peace FM Online. Eesh. Hey. Look how many Ghanaian artists are still struggling to play live. The moment they strum the guitar, they go off key. Several billions of miles away from the key. Rocky Dawoodi, from the first day he recorded a note of music, he was singing live. Why is live music so important to a musician, professional musician? Because if it is not live music, then it's dead music. You don't have a live career if you continue singing dead music. Especially that nowadays, the music is not even selling. It only sells on stage. I'm sad when she made this statement. As I said, I do not normally review entertainment stories. But it's unfortunate. Are you casting a slayer on this? The video and the rest, the Nigerian, did they also get it via a connection? Are you saying that Rocky Dawuni's album it does not qualify? It is not good enough? Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. When the shame, please. Hey! Hey, listen to the quality of Rocky's album and compare it to any of the albums around. It might not be the best album released in Ghana, but there are uh, stra oh, how is it called? There are yardsticks. You understand? For every album's qualification. I won't go deeper than this. I leave it here. My brother, my sister, looking at my time. We have so many things to talk about, my brother. So many things today. But looking at the time, my brother, my sister, it's time for us to say bye-bye. And uh, because we're talking about Rocky Dawuni, I'm going to play one of his songs. It's called Wara. After that, I'm going to play another one. And that one is called Beautiful People. Wara is a high life song. Compare it to other high life artists in this country. And tell me, Rocky Dawuni hasn't done well. And we trade the name Black Rasta. It's been the Black Pot. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Yes, I love you. No two ways about that. Mm -hmm.